the Mimer Mikumecho, where we're up to, uh, we have now spoken about divine energies in, t in creation, one through the process of simsumim, which means contraction, yeah. concealment, um, diluted, with the idea that um, there is a energizing force for each particular creation that comes down via a cause and effect. It will be all effect through spirituality that eventually comes down to a so such a low level that that it can it, it can uh, exist to a point where there there isn't revelation of godliness and we get to the point like we exist that we don't see godliness openly that's one angle that we've spoken about another angle that we've spoken is that the world seems to be created something from nothing we call that yesh mahayim it means to the point it means that this level of diminution of godly light that we that we have is so has been the godly light has been so reduced to the effect that although we might recognize that we don't understand our creation our create the, how we've been created but we do recognize that something must have brought us into being and we but we have no grasp of that so we call that a level of an ayin we call that a level of spirituality and say that we have uh, is that we have been created a uh, yesh we have been created something from nothing and this is the level of our existence that we that we relate to a mode of being of perception of physicality into the extent where we can only recognize godliness as an I and as a nothing. All I can say about it is that it, it must exist, but I don't know about it, its existence and that and that it created and that it created me. That's the idea of Yeshma Ayan. I have something has been created from a level of a level of Ayan. But we we spoke about that all physical creations have come down into this level, have been created, but have a have a source in the spiritual realms. And all physic everything physical, anything that exists in the physical realm has a corresponding source in a spiritual realm that's that is uh, giving it some sort of energies and and that there is a correspondence on the spiritual level to something on the physical level we come from a excerpt from the vision of Yechezkel. We've mentioned the angels that exist, and these angels exist, um, and they're mentioned in the in the in the Yechezkel, in the in the men, in the mentions of of the visions of Yechezkel, and he mentions that he sees that he saw the divine chariot, he saw. He saw Malachim, he saw the angels. We understand, we are taught that that the that from what was seen by Yechesko, those appearances are the are the sources for the spiritual energies below and that everything that exists in the physical realm has some sort of source in that vision of Yechezkel, of the, of the chariot of glory, and that can be traced back to that level of spirit, of, spirit, of, of spiritual energy that exists in the, in the worlds, in the spiritual worlds. Let's have 
a look at that source text from Yecheskel. So I'm going to share with you, I'm going to share with you the, the um, a screen and you'll be able to see um, the, the area, the quotes that we're going to, that we're going to refer to. So in the book of Yecheskel, first chapter, he's, he's, he, 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 he speaks about a vision that he had, and he says, the era, and and I looked the hine rechs era ba, a stormy wind came out of the north, a huge cloud and flashing fire, and surrounded by a radiance, and in the center of it, in the center of the fire, a gleam as of anger. So we have the expression ka'ain achashmal. Uh, meaning, uh, meaning that there is this, this, this radiance that is coming out. and in the center, Dumus Arbachayas, there was the image of four Chayas, and he translates it creations, Marhem, and and they had an appearance. Dumus Odom Lahena, and they had in some respects somehow. A human, a human figure, the Arba Ponim, they each had four faces, the Arba Ponim, Lechos, the Arba Knofaim, Lechos, Mayim, and then, and then he speaks about other, other parts that he, other parts of the vision that he had, um, and then, and then he, he speaks about them that. Demus Panehem, Pnei Odom, each of them had a human face. Um, and each of those faces were Pnei Arya, um, but each of them four had a face of Pnei Arya El Yamin, the face of a lion on the right, Larbosom, Pnei Sher, they had a face of an ox, Maasmael to the left, Larbosom, Pnei Nesher, Larbosom, and they had the face of an eagle. So such were the of Pnechem, that was their faces, and then it, it speaks about their wings, and then it 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 moves on and me and and mentions, mentions something else. Um, and then it talks about Bachaya's Rosa Bashev, Kamara Habezak, the creatures, the the that these creatures went Rotsa Bashev, went backwards and forwards. Um, dashing to and fro, um, and such as the um, um, such is uh, the, the the quotes. Those quotes are all um, all quotes are quoted when we speak about um, um, when we speak about them. Okay. Um, that's the point of what we're um, you know we're going to use for the moment. So I'll stop the share and. Um, um, and that, but um, um, we t he also talks about um, he also t talks about the the noise that they that the noise that they that they uh, and they made right um, his discussion with them and and other um, other aspects. Um, we'll we'll stop that there. Okay. Now, the, 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 this section of the Mimer wants to that will speak about, as we've spoken about previously, uh, it will speak about that the that a physical entity has its has its roots and is reflected in the higher spiritual realms. Previously, we spoke about a rooster and how that what and how it its activities had some sort of reflection in the in the in the lower in the in the lower realms and the higher realms. So the physical rooster, when he's crowing at dawn, was a reflection of an activity that was happening in the spiritual heavens, the idea of the wakening up of the Nashomas in Ganadin, and also the the, the the wakening up of the level of one level in in the world of Atsilis, rising from 
Malchus of Atzilus, the Abina of Atzilus, um, and rising and giving energies for a new, for a new drawing down of energies into the world. That's what we learned. That's what we had learned um, previously. Now he's going to. Now he's speaking about a. Now he's going to turn his attention to a physical lion, and then say that there is a representation of a lion, a physical lion in the spiritual realms, and he's going to delineate some of the, some of those, some of those connections. And that's, and that's where we are. All that we are saying, all we, all the words that we're going to read are all profound and mystical, mystical concepts that in our, um, in the, in the uh, text, which we, which, which we can refer to, um, uh, have worked through, have worked through some of the notes, and we'll try to refer to some of the, um, the notes as we go along. Um, but uh, of course, they are very deep and esoteric. So let's, and we'll try to put it together, but the, but the, but the flow, um, even though it's possible to um, um, not pick up exactly everything that's going on, um, the flow is the idea that we're presenting is that there are, it is documented within the Torah and within our, within our, um, within our teachings that the, that there is a representation of the physical lion on, on different levels and spirituality and they all and and those and the level the physical levels take their spiritual source from those levels okay so let's start the section on the lion so it's with it's a, in a similar sense as we've said all aspects of a creation have a, a source in the higher realms um, like a like an Arie Arie lion, Lamato, a physical lion in in um, this realm, where its shorsho, where its root in the spiritual realms, who bechinas Arie Shvemakova comes from the mentioned Arie, the mentioned lion that was in the vision of, of Yecheskel, as we saw in that text, Shabar Merkova, that was in the Merkova. Rakshahu Baderach Shmira. However, its existence came through the concept of Shmira. Now, that itself needs elaboration. We will skip it for the moment. Um, and come back to it, but it's to say that the that the the, the passage of and the create and the creation of a physical lion came through the concept of breaking of the vessels, which is mentioned in Kabbalah. Um, but, but, and nevertheless, so even though the the source and its beings came through this came through like the generic creation of everything came through Shmira Sekelem. Im Kolze, with all of that, um, with all of, just as we have stated that, um, even though we've said that its source comes from Shmira Sekelem, nevertheless, Im Kolze, who sherish, um, Im Kolze, who sherish Amoka, Hari Bechdei, Sheish Dalshul, Abachinas, Ari, Shmira but this supernal um, lion in its source and origin, that is the source, Shri Zakalin. Um, nevertheless, the, the image of the lion in the Merkova is its actual, is its actual source and creative. So, so the, the lion as it exists 
in the holy chariot, as we mentioned, as we saw in the text, Sha'oma, and it is one of the angels, which all the angels proclaim the holiness of Hashem. So they Sha'oma, they say Kodesh, and and that aspect of saying Kodesh um, um, is reflected and it is reflected in the physical lion that that physical lion um, comes into comes into the physical realm and it might it might be it might be doing um, the acts that a lion does that is um, uh, it, it 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 hunts and it claws and it and it uh, uh, um, tears away. Uh, nevertheless, even this violent animal, as an animal, nevertheless, it comes through the positive and myriad stages of de evolvement in Seder Ishtalshalas. But and afterwards, through the, through the Creation, yes, mine, Miss Haba, Ari Gashmi, a lion, a physical lion is created. And even though we've, we've said that it came into being via yes, mine, and it has its sources in the spiritual realms, the, 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 the spiritual realms of the lion have place have we can define and we can understand that there are um, uh, within the Seder Ishtalshlas there is sources of the lion and the emes yes cherish aria gam hagbo lamayli yesa there is a source um, um, in of the lion and um, we can note that the lion has is mentioned in our texts in our different texts that they that it is reflective of specific level spiritual levels as an example shabbat silas in the realm in the world of atzillas but in as chesed it is it has a connection to the realm of chesed and it also is mentioned as a as a as a level within the level of lion of of the chariot in the four in the three worlds of Bria Yitzira and Kaneda Shachayas and Yitzira, as is as mentioned, that the realm of the angels called Achayas are in the spiritual realm of Yitzira, and Bria they are the Krubim and and Shaheim they are Michal the Gabriel, Kimeshikosu Bazaya as mentioned in Zaya, and Atzilas. Um, they are Bachinas Chesed and Gvura. They have an aspect of of Chesed and Gvura, meaning expansion and contraction, that's reflected in, in Merkov to Ilah in the Merkava in the supernal chariot, as uh, as mentioned in Asilas. And it, even there's a there's a connective connection even higher. That there is an aspect of Arye in the realm of Chokma, Chokma being the first creative element of spheres within the ten spheres. As Chokma Nikras Arye, the, the wisdom of the Kabbalah tells us that Chokma is called Arye, uh, and that is. That Arye who Asius Rio, that the word Arye, uh, literally meaning the lion, but spelt Aleph Resh Yud Hey, is the same letters as the word Rio, the next le- next one, which we say, which is, which is about vision, and 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 there's a hint toward this meaning. Siva says we are a racious leg, and he sees the beginning to him. So we see that there is a, a connective point to the word Vieira to see and racious and the and meaning the beginning, 
that joins together the idea that that vision is uh, is is a beginning, um, and that is explained. What the, what that means in explanation is is that if a person captures with vision with vision an image, he captures everything. While if he captures something with he, with a lower sense, meaning let's say the, the the sense of hearing, he has to piecemeal put the image together. So the idea of neuro vision is like a higher is a higher level of of capturing an image, and 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 this reflects to the idea of chokma that when you first imagine or when you first get an innovative idea when the first flash of the of the idea comes into your brain you have a vision of it and then later on you break it down into detail so what the Rebbe is saying is over here is the word Arya has a connection to Kochma we've got the idea connection to a vision and and that itself means that it is the higher part of Kochma and therefore we can utilize an expression like saying Chachomim ene ha'eda that the wise people are the eyes of the congregation and not only is this idea of Arya the lion rooted in the highest level of the ten spheres, but even higher, even higher, it connects to it connects to the level of Kesa, which Kesa Nikra Arya, where the level of Kesa, which is the source of all the ten spheres, is also referred to um, in the word Arya Kmishatosa, Arya Sheik Mila Yira Shemalakim. Um, a, a, a expression um, uh, and um, continues the, uh, from a, from from a verse, um, and it says "Dibo and continues the verse. Hashem alakim dibo mi lo yon lo yonova when Hashem speaks uh, is uh, um, uh, do, um, who does not prophesy prophesies and. It is, it, and it's expressed Basparim Shakal Shakoi al Tabar Anechi Hashemalat Kecho. This ex previous verse that we just said of that of that that when when the lion roars he, um, um, to someone when Hashem when the lion roars he, you know aren't you scared refers to and it connects it to the idea that that when God speaks. This is the, the highest level of revelation of God, where he says, like in the words of the Ten Commandments, the beginning words, I, I am your Lord, your God. It uses the expression, where Shanikra Gum came, that this expression is also called Arye. And why is that? And he gives a, um, a gematria um, connecting connection that 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 if you multiply by three, and we've previously learned the idea of reduction happens by virtues of in terms of three, which we talk about when we talk about Shelley and we talk about the, the three um, levels of three. Give more problems. Three times we have the. We have the expression iron base, the gematria of 72. 72, we have one of God's names which now can be written out um, um, in its fullest measure to come up to the number 72. 72 times three comes to comes to the level of 216, which is the gematria of Arya. But uh, um, and further um, and um, and. Uh, and further, the word anechi is the words of ani, which is I, with the chof inside of it. With that chof that joins together, that means Hashem, who calls himself I, but um, but is implied by a higher level of the chof representing keser. The nimsa. So, so what is the outcome? This is so. What we've said is some very profound. Um, 
words which need which need elucidation and, and you'll see that there's elucidation in the text of the notes right? but the, um, where we're going with that is that he's he's saying that I can find a level of aria a a reflection of the spiritual level of lion in multiple levels in the Seder Ishtalshalas, in the in the realms of godliness, and therefore that's what he says in the next paragraph. But Nimsa therefore comes out ki yesh bechines ad Arya. We can find the idea of Arya ad Reim Hamilas to the highest levels. Shachol bechines Arya and all the levels of the of the inverted commas lion is have a zeh they are all get, they're all connected and created one from each other, but there are histalshlas amadregas in the, in the, um, in the de-involvement from, in, from the highest levels down to the lowest levels. Uh, and there is a connective point in him, achaka, and then afterwards in this, in the involvement of the spiritual levels, down to its lowest level, it then comes in a physical sense and gets created. But Yeshma, it comes created a bria, a creation, Yeshma Ayan, something from nothing. And and he and then he stops and he says, and that's how it is by the lion. And then by extension, by the con conceptual extension, he says that all creations everything that we find in our physical universe has a similar deconstruction method um, from the spiritual realms to down from the highest spiritual realms there's a de-evolvement all the way um, all the way down through all the different four worlds of spiritualism um, down to the point when it can become into the physical world, where in the physical world is created in a way of in, in a way of yeshma ayin, and therefore we continue. Bechain al derech says so. He continues, and similarly so. Bechol dova vadova with every with every object that exists in the world, but daimim in the inanimate world, but tameach in the vegetable world, chaya in the in the in the animal world, Umadaba, and in the human world. So this passage of, and this is, this is, um, so this passage that we've just um, read together um, continues the line of what we had, of what we had been learning previously, that, that physical entities in this world are evolved from or de-evolved from the spiritual realms into the physical realm um, at the at the point of when the when the spiritual realms go down to its lowest level they then become transformed into something physical but they can trace their origins through back in the spiritual realms even to the even to the highest even to the highest levels of uh, of existence. So, as we've described the passage, as we've as we've been reading um, um, and been teaching, the idea being of the de evolution, um, the evolvement of the higher realms to the lower realms. We mentioned the Merkava. So in the translation and commentary, um, which you've noted in the notes, but there's some discussion, interesting discussion in 87, so about the Merkava. So I'm going to, I'm going to 87. We did read, um, we, we did read parts of that in the text. Um, so we'll just, we'll go to that section of the note where it says about every, it's known that every physical creation must have a celestial source from which it receives its life force and existence. In fact, it's very being and physical characteristics are synonymous, are synonymous 
to their spiritual source, even though they're even though they are physical, but they get their energies from their spiritual source. And then all living cre creatures, all living creatures are derived from their spiritual angels that are found in the divine chariot. And consequently, when we read about the faces of the lion and the ox in the divine chariot, they are in fact the sources for all physical animals and beasts. And further, the chayas, which, are, which have the faces of, of the lion and the ox, are, are given the aspect of the spiritual idea of Kubura and the angels and the angels which are known as Seraphim, they they derive their name from coals of fire. They also take from um, they also take from the faces of the lion and the ox. And the physical animals that evolved from these angels, they the physical animals take their strength from the angels which are strong and powerful and because they've been they're because they've been described as such they take they take their strength from the, those aspects of of the, uh, that are mentioned in the vision of 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 Yechesko, um, being that they the idea of fire and strength and and color so all the beasts derive their energies from the face of the lion, all the animals from the face of an ox, and all the birds from the face of the eagle. So it's not just the animals that derive, um, it, as we talk about, interestingly, from this note, it's not just the animals which derive energies from the, uh, from the, from the chariot, but in fact, also other uh, other creations example the two souls of every jew is mentioned that it's it is mentioned that the that the neshama itself takes energies from the from the chariot so the two souls of every jew the godly soul and the enemy animal soul also rooted in the chariot however the godly soul is known as Odom, a man, as is written, and God created man in his image. And in Yechezkel, in, the, in verse 26, um, which we didn't get to share, but um, we'll, we'll find it, um, is written upon the likeness of a throne, a likeness of the appearance of a man. That in the Zeha is reference to the Nefesh Elikus. From that, and from that same passage, as we were just reading from 127 uh, and 126, right, we, we see the idea that there is um, the idea that, um, um, he is, that there is a man that was created there, as, um, as it says, that the, in the vision he saw, and on top upon this semblance of the throne, the throne referred to the, the God's throne, there is a semblance of a human form, Demus Kamara Odom. That is what the note which we're reading and working through is referring to, that the Nefeshel, of course, that, this, that the godly soul takes from the chariot, but takes from this image of Gemara Odom. And this is and this is the idea that in the creation of the godly soul and its descent to this world, the light found within the sphere is the you find is finds the origin of man descends to this world, passing through the chariot, and specifically its human face, which is thus considered a more closer source of the godly soul, but not so the animal soul. The animal soul, the Nefesh of Bahamas, is rooted not in the spheres, but in the chariot itself, and it then descends to a lowly derivative of the angels called the Fanim, which are the lower orders, which are lower order of angels and the Chayas, 
and the animal soul is derived from the Afanim, but it's originally rooted in the face of the ox of the divine chariot, quoting from the Kutitera. And, and in addition to all the physical living create creatures finding their source in the chariot, we find mentioned that the negative forces or the clippers in the world are rooted in the storm wind and the great cloud blazing amid, amid which Yechezkel beheld his vision. So in that, in that section, which we'll just show right at the beginning again, in this section over, over here, he says, he says, he says, this expression, the huge cloud, the flashing fire, um, and, uh, and, the, and the winds, uh, that stormy wind expression, right, sweeping out of, out of the north, that is, a, that is the reference which the note talks about, that um, this is the that this is the this is the sources for the referred to the three totally impure clipper which contain absolutely no good and they are the source of any thought speech of action by mankind in transgression of a negative command in the Torah. Let's let's look in, in in note 90, where he describes the idea of Seder Ishtalshlis. Um and in note in note 90 in the text, he he, he says Rav Shmuel elaborates about the level of lion on the different spiritual levels. Each level of Seder Ishtalshlis is a metaphor for a higher realm, and. For example, the physical lion is only a metaphor for the lion of the chariot, which proclaims holy and blessed, meaning Kodush and Baruch, the, the, uh, um, as we say in our prayers. In our prayers, we talk about that the holy angels say Kodush, 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 and they say, and they say Baruch. So the lion of the realm of the holy realm called Bria is a metaphor for chesed of a, of a level above it called Atsilas, which is called lion, as we learned in the text. The lion of Atsilas, which is the chesed of Atsilas, is only a metaphor for chokhmah, which is also called a lion, as is written. And we, we read that in the text also. He saw the beginning for himself, alluding to the level of beginning of chokhmah. Ariya lion has the same letters as Riyah, as we mentioned, the lion. The lion of chokhmah is also a metaphor for the higher realm called Keter, as we as we continued. And it is written in the Medrash that this is the speech of Anuchi, I am God. Um, from another source, we made that connection between the level of Anuchi and Keser. So in conclusion, this section has essentially told, uh, wants us to tell us that, as the last paragraph said, the line exists on all planes in some form, and in each, and each form of the lion evolves and de-evolves from one, from one spiritual level down to, the, down, to the, down to the next level, till we come to this physical realm where is created Bria Yesh Me'ayin. And that the same process happens to all the other, uh, all the other aspects within, within creation, the uh, vegetable level, the human level, the animal level, and the mineral level. And we'll find and we'll continue on that this also happens in aspects which relate to the other celestial beings um, like the sun and the moon. Okay, till we and we'll leave it there for the moment and we'll we'll come back to it next in our next